The Million Dollar Shot by Dan Goodman. This is for my friend Ethan, who is reading this book, and it's one of my favorites, so I'm going to read it with him. And I'm going to start at chapter seven, because I know that's kind of where he is, but I need to go back and reread some of it because it's been such a long time. So chapter seven, The Secret. The news got around school pretty fast. Mr. Iannucci was nice enough to let me use the gym any time I wanted so I could practice my foul shooting. There's a good backboard there with a regulation rim and a full net. Annie and I biked over to school on Saturday for my first session. When I opened the door to the gym, Ty and Johnny were in there shooting baskets. I hadn't spoken with them in a while. Annie was locking up our bikes to the bike rack. Now, this is just me thinking. I remember Ty and Johnny, I think they were not very nice to Eddie and Annie. So I'm not exactly sure, but let's see what happens. Okay, back to the story. Well, look who's here, Johnny said. The million dollar kid. I guess you think you're pretty hot stuff now. Mr. Iannucci said I could use the gym at noon, I said as calmly as I could. Well, we still have two minutes, Ty informed me. You know, Eddie, everybody knows you're a lousy basketball player. Oh, now I remember. These are the kids that used to call him like air ball or something, right? <clears throat> If anybody should be in that contest, said Johnny, it should be me. Then maybe you should have entered it, I replied, instead of sitting there on your butt. Hey, I can kick your butt all the way to Pizza Hut, Johnny said, pointing a finger at my chest. I was about to take a swing at him when Annie grabbed me from behind. That's, that's what a good friend does. Forget it, Eddie, she said, holding me back. You've got to practice. Ty and Johnny fell all over themselves laughing as they walked out of the gym. Yeah, Eddie, listen to your girlfriend, Ty smirked. Time for practice. He's gonna need it, Johnny added. Loser. So long, airball. Ty cracked as the door slammed shut behind them. Let them laugh, I thought. They were the losers. Annie and I had the gym all to ourselves. Hey, Annie, I said, watch this. After we pulled a bunch of basketballs out from behind the bleachers, I put the ball behind my back, leaned forward, and flipped it over my head. It fell short of the rim. Very impressive, she said. Oh, yeah? Let's see you do this. I turned around so my back was to the basket. I bounced the ball once and then kicked it over my head. It went flying over the backboard. Eddie, she said after I chased down the ball, I think you should be serious about this. What are you worried about? I'm going to make the shot. So you're pretty sure of yourself, she said. How about you take 10 serious shots right now and we'll see how you do. No sweat. I stepped up to the line and I put up a shot. It bounced off the back of the rim and came right back to me. Um, that, uh, that one was just practice. I said, tell that to George Finkel when you missed your million dollar shot, she said. You're 0 for 1, big shot. I drilled the second and third shots, but missed the fourth. Number 5 and 6 went in the net, then I missed 7 and 8. I swished number 9. Just before I let go of number 10, Annie jumped in front of me and waved her hands in the air and the ball bounced off the rim and off to the side. Hey, what are you trying to do? I complained. Wreck my concentration? Yes, she exclaimed. Eddie, you're going to be under incredible pressure when you take the million dollar shot. People will be screaming and waving banners. You know Finkel is going to try to ice you. I got ice water in my veins, I boasted. I'll sink it. You can bet on it. Bet on it? Annie sounded angry at me. You just made five out of 10, 50%. 50% isn't bad. Wow, if I got a 50% on a test, I don't know if I'd be very happy. <clears throat> Eddie, 
On June 14th, you're going to get one shot. That's it. 50-50 is not very good odds. And with the pressure on, it's more like 40-60. So that's 40% that he could do it and 60% that he can't do it. And let's see, 40 is less than 60. So she is not betting he'll be successful. Anyway, she says, I wouldn't bet on you. Hey, lighten up, Banny. It's going to be a piece of cake. Well, if you're so sure of yourself, I guess you don't need my help, she huffed. And then she marked off. She marched off the court. Annie, wait, I called after. I'll get serious. But she was already on her bike, heading home by herself. Oh, man. Now all my friends were mad at me. It was turning into a really lousy day. Mom and I went fishing. Oh, sorry, finishing. Mom and I were finishing the dinner dishes when someone banged on the door. We were surprised to see Annie's dad standing there, and he didn't have Annie with him. Hmm. Come in, Mr. Stokely, Mom said, quickly putting stuff away so the trailer would look more presentable. Excuse the mess. Mr. Stokely had to duck his head down to fit inside. At first, I thought he had come over to beat me up because of the argument I had with Annie. <laughs> That's funny, like a dad would come beat up a kid. But he had a gentle look in his eyes. And in his enormous hands, he was holding a brand new, top of the line, Spalding Official League basketball still in the box. Oh my God, that's a hundred dollar ball, I said. You're right, he replied. If you're gonna shoot your best, you're going to shoot with the best. He opened the box, palmed the ball. God, this guy must have been, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wasn't he a professional basketball player at some point, I think? Hmm, I remember he opened the box, palmed the ball and held it toward me. Compared to that ratty old basketball I've always had, this one looked like a ruby or an emerald or something. It's for me? I asked. Yeah, Mr. Stokely said, but there's a catch. What's the catch? You gotta let me coach you. Sure. And you gotta get serious. You gotta do everything I say. Uh, okay, I said. When do we start? Now. Now? It'll be, got, it'll be getting dark out soon. Now. Mom nodded to me, and I left with Mr. Stokely. Shooting a free throw is the easiest thing in the world, he said, as we walked over to the, to the court in the trailer park where I'd first met Annie. The court was lit by one single floodlight. There are only four ways you can miss. Short, long, right, or left. That's it. He stopped at the foul line. Okay, he said, handing me the new ball. Show me your stuff. I spun the ball a few times in my hand, put my right foot forward against the land, and popped up a shot. It went in, and I was pretty proud of myself. You're taking a jumper, Mr. Stokely exclaimed. He acted as if I had just murdered someone. <laughs> what are you taking a jump shot from the foul line for? I always shoot foul shots this way, I said. You're you, sorry, you shoot a jumper when somebody is in your face, he explained. Putting your body in motion only increases the chance that you'll miss. Now, you don't have to jump for a foul shot. Nobody's guarding you. The pro shooters jump on foul shots. That's why the pros only average 66% eddy. A free throw is not like a shot from the floor. It's a whole different game and you gotta play it different. If you wanna make all your free throws, you take a set shot. Both feet against the line, both feet on the floor. A set shot, I said, wrinkling up my nose. That's how they used to shoot in prehistoric times, back in the 70s. <laughs> I was a little kid in the 70s, prehistoric times, that's funny. Okay, nobody shoots that way anymore. It doesn't look cool. 
How cool is it gonna look when you step up to the line for your million dollar shot and you chuck a brick? Ugh, not too cool, I admitted. Well, all right then. You wanna learn the secret to shooting foul shots? Secret? I scoffed. I just put up the ball. What's the secret in that? Mr. Stokely shook his head <laughs> and chuckled softly to himself. He removed his wristwatch, slipped it into his pocket, and stepped up to the foul line. What do you shoot, Eddie? He asked. 50 or 60 percent? Mm, about that, I answered. The rim, and I remember the first time I read this part, and I was stunned. This really freaked me out. The rim is 18 inches across. The ball is only 9 inches across. You could stuff two balls in there at the same time if you wanted to. You, you got no excuse. Oh, so there's plenty of room. You got no excuse for a miss. You should shoot 100%. When I first read that part about the rim being 18 inches wide and the ball being 9 inches wide, I was like, oh my God, 18 inches is two times bigger than 9 inches. The rim is actually two times bigger than the ball. That freaked me out. Nobody shoots 100%, I said. Well, he didn't respond. He just bounced the ball slowly three times. Then he glanced up at the backboard quickly and took a shot. The ball swished through the net. I retrieved it and flipped it back to him. He bounced the ball three times again, looked up, and swished in another one. When Mr. Stokely drilled five in a row, I was impressed. When he hit 10 in a row, I was amazed. But he just kept going. 15 in a row, 20 in a row, no misses. He looked like he was in a trance. Bounce, 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 look up, shoot, swish. Same thing every time. I'd never seen anyone with aim like that. When the 25th straight shot dropped through the net, Wow, Mr. Stokely finally broke his concentration and turned towards me. So, he demanded, do you want to learn the secret or not? I do, I do. Okay, all right then, he said. You're going to do everything I say? Because if you're not, I don't want to waste my time on you. I will, I will. He took me by the shoulder and moved me to the foul line. Put both your feet right against the line, shoulder width apart, he instructed, pushing my body the way he wanted it. You need to be perfectly balanced. If you put one foot forward like you do, that makes your shoulders turn and you might miss to the left or to the right. Do you feel comfortable? No, <laughs> I said. You will, trust me. He handed me the ball. I spun it in my hands a few times to get the feel of it. Oh, don't slide your hands all over the ball, he scolded, snatching the ball away. See that little black rubber dot, the inflation hole? Make sure that hole is facing up the whole time. What difference does it make, I added, or I asked. The ball is round. You'll see. Put your thumbs in the groove here and put your middle fingers towards the hole. I don't know about you, Ethan, but if I were you, I might be trying this in the basketball place I play at. He gave me the ball back and I did as he said, pointing my finger towards the little hole where you stick the ball, stick the pin in to inflate the ball. Now, bounce the ball three times. Don't dribble it, bounce it slowly. You wanna get that blood moving through your arms and hands. Now, what do you do with your legs? I don't shoot with my legs, I said. I shoot with my arms. You think so, huh? He went to the side of the court and dragged a lawn chair over to the foul line. Okay, well, let's see how well you shoot sitting down, using just your arms. I sat in the rickety old chair and put up a shot. <laughs> the ball didn't even make it halfway to the rim. See what I mean, Mr. Stokely said, taking the chair away. You gotta bend your knees and use your legs to power the ball up. If your shot falls short, 
That means you're not bending your knees enough. Your arms should be used to guide the ball toward the basket. Pretend your arms are 15 feet long and then you can just drop the ball in the hoop. I retrieved the ball and did as he said, bending my knees and reaching out toward the basket with both arms. Now, what are your elbows flapping in the breeze for? He asked, keep your elbows in against your sides. When your elbows are out, you're gonna push the ball sideways, left or right. You want your hands moving directly toward the target, straight for the basket. It feels stupid with my elbows in, I complained. It feels stupider when you chuck an air ball in front of a million people. Mm, well, couldn't argue with that. Now we got to get to work on your head, Eddie. What are you thinking as you stand at the foul line? I uh, think about making the shot, I said. Wrong, he yelled. You don't want to think about nothing. When you think, half the time you're thinking negative thoughts. And negative thoughts make you miss. Quick, what's the two-letter abbreviation for mountain? Um, MT, I said. Right, he yelled. MT, and that's what your head should be as you stand at the foul line. Empty. Ha, <laughs> that's cute. I don't want you thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow or what you did yesterday. Clear your mind. Focus on right now. What are you thinking about right now? Nothing. Good. Now, look down at that inflation hole on the ball for one second. Focus all your concentration on it, like a magnifying glass, focusing sunlight on a spot so hot that it burns. Just one second. The crowd is yelling their heads off, but you don't hear them. They can't change the flight of the ball. Now, look at your target. What are you going to look at as you shoot? Uh, the rim, I said tentatively. I wasn't sure of anything anymore, but that sounded like the only possible answer. No, Mr. Stokely yelled. If you look at the rim, you'll hit the rim. You want to look a little bit above the rim. I want you to imagine a column of air, an empty space that curves up and through the middle of the rim, a nice high arc like a rainbow. Now shoot the ball through that column of air. Whew, wow, this is loud. I took a few moments to visualize a thick round glass tube leading from my hand and up and into the basket like a funnel. I took a deep breath and prepared to take my shot. What are you staring at? Mr. Bo Mr. Stokely suddenly barked. Don't stare at the basket. It ain't going nowhere. You must, your most accurate view of the target is the instant you first see it. The longer you stare at it, the more you start calculating how far away it is and how high your arc should be. Stare at the inflation hole. Then just glance at the basket. Your instincts and muscle memory will tell you the right distance and direction. Whew, this is a lot to remember. I step to the line again. Okay, Eddie, Mr. Stokely said, it's just you and the basket and the ball. Put it all together. I took a couple of deep breaths and put my feet square to the line. I bounced the ball slowly three times, keeping the inflation hole up. I put my thumbs in the groove, elbows in, knees bent, focused on the inflation hole, glanced a little bit above the rim and I put it up. Swish! Whoa! Now that's the way you shoot a free throw, Mr. Stokely said, clapping me on the back. <gasps> wow! Was all I could say. It was an amazing feeling. It was totally effortless. I felt completely comfortable at the line. I felt like my body was a machine, engineered to do nothing but shoot free throws. Now, do it again. Mr. Stokely said, after flipping me the ball, you've got to use the same exact routine every time you shoot until it is so repetitive. It comes naturally, like breathing. You'll get to the point where you know the ball's going to go in as soon as it leaves your fingertips. I did it again, and the ball swished. 
right through the net, and again, and again. I drilled ten in a row without even touching the rim. How does it feel? Mr. Stokely asked. Like a million bucks, I said, and we both laughed. <laughs> now you know the secret. The sun had completely disappeared from the sky, replaced by a show of stars. Mr. Stokely sat down on the tarm on the blacktop, stretching his long legs out in front of him. I sat down, too. Who taught you the secret? I asked. My coach at St. John's, he asked. Annie told me you almost made it to the pros. Came close, he sighed. I was the star of my team my senior year, averaged 18 points a game. Scouts from the Lakers and Rockets were coming around looking at me over, and I was sure they were going to draft me. I figured I'd be doing my own sneaker commercials, driving a fine car. What went wrong? I got cocky. I goofed off. I didn't show up for classes, didn't run my laps. I got lazy. I was so sure they were going to draft me, I was out spending the bonus money I didn't even have yet when I should have been practicing. Then I didn't get drafted. I could have been with the Lakers. Instead, I wound up with Finkel. Mr. Stokely spit on the blacktop, stood up, and extended his long arm to help me up. Sometimes you get one chance in life, Eddie, he said, and he walked me back to my trailer. One shot, no do-overs. This is your shot, your opportunity to get out of this dump. Don't blow it like I did. I watched as he slowly walked back to his trailer. Wow. That's a lot. So he could have made the pros but he didn't. He should have made the pros, but he didn't work hard enough. Wow. No wonder he's so motivated to get Annie to do things the right way and to help Eddie. Wow. That's a really big deal. Okay, my friend. Chapter eight coming at you later on tonight. See ya.